Well, here we have a valve bank with five motor actuated ball valves. I believe we're on year four here. You can see the yellow one. One of them did crap out and got replaced. But for the most part, they're a really good product. A couple reasons to use these things. The reason we're using them here is because we have very low pressure. This is a gravity fed system. We have about five feet of head. We hardly have any pressure at all. Nowhere near enough pressure to operate a typical solenoid valve or a scrubber valve. These things need at least 10 to 20 PSI to operate reliably or they won't open and close. The motor actuated ball valve will open and close on low pressure. They're a pretty simple concept. They're your most basic ball valve with a motor actuator that sits on top. The handle comes off, the motor goes on, and the motor is what opens and closes the ball valve. Very reliable performance can work on low pressure, high pressure, dirty water, clean water, doesn't really matter. Not nearly as picky as a scrubber valve or a solenoid valve. So these things have a great purpose in the irrigation industry. They can handle a wide range of products, pressures, and flows. Let's pull this motor off and we'll take a look at what's going on. We'll loosen the ring with a pair of channel locks and we'll unthread it. And now the actuator will come right off. And you can see it's just your basic standard ball valve with a different style handle. That top piece on top of the ball valve fits the female piece on the motor actuator. They lock right together real well and the ring threads down and holds it together. To put the motor back on, you line them up, press them back together and tighten down the lock ring. It fits right in the tangs and then tightens right back up with your channel locks. Now we're back in business. Here's our water source. It's a gravity fed water box flowing out with only about five feet ahead to our valve box that sits right down there with our motor actuated ball valves. No solenoid valve will perform on this low of pressure. The only thing that performs are the motor actuated ball valves. And from our valve box we're running downhill strictly on gravity supplying water to these trees out here in this landscape out here. It works perfect on a gravity system as long as your target is downhill from your source. In this case it's working just right. It'll run the little micro spinners just fine. This series of valves is a 24 volt valve. It operates on a 24 volt system just like a solenoid valve does. We can run it off the transformer off your regular sprinkler controller as long as it's running 24 volt also. We go from the transformer to the valve and then we use our signal wires zones 1 through 6 from the controller to the valve. You can run your whole system off your regular sprinkler controller and motor actuated ball valves. Not only will these work on low pressure, they'll work on high pressure. If your pressure is too high to run your scrubber valves or solenoid valves, you can usually run a ball valve. These can handle up to 200 PSI. Another issue is extremely dirty water. Since all it's doing is opening and closing a ball valve, these will handle sludge like on my hydro seeder or at a wastewater treatment plant. You could operate these from a control panel to send sludge to a different tank. So that's another application, extremely dirty water. The three reasons the solenoid valves won't work reliably are low water pressure, high water pressure, and extremely dirty water. The ball valve doesn't really care, and the motor doesn't really care. These will work on low pressure, high pressure, or extremely dirty water like sludge. Another unique thing about these guys is they open and close very slowly, very softly. So if you have 100 PSI and it's really slamming your main line open and close with your solenoid valve, these guys will open and close very slowly, making the start and stop much more easy on the water system. It doesn't hammer nearly as bad with these guys. Sometimes these will chatter real bad. These guys won't. Let's take a look at the controller side of things here. You use your common pigtail you bring your 110 up into your junction box just like you always have. On this little model controller the transformer sits back here behind the screen and then your 24 volt comes out to these two terminals. Usually with small AC appliances it doesn't matter because you could plug in either direction. But we are going to check which is which. We're going to ground to the common and we can see on the meter 26 and a half. That's our 24. They give you a couple extra volts accounting for some voltage drop. So this right terminal here is our 24 volt terminal. And of course this is our return over here, our neutral. We're going to use some real basic two strand low voltage landscape wire. And we're going to run this through a conduit all the way to our valve box. We got it unplugged, we're going to loosen the two terminals and we're going to plug right into these two terminals. That's going to be our 24 volt power supply. These things have to have a constant 24 volt power supply to operate. And we're going to get that 24 volt consistent power from these two terminals. 
The motor actuator uses three wires, brown, blue, and black, and it tells you right on here what they are. The brown is your load, the blue is your neutral, the black is your signal. That's coming from zone one. So when you turn on zone one or zone two, it's going to the black wire to tell this thing to turn on or off. So your brown gets the hot 24 volt, your blue gets the neutral 24 volt, and your black goes to whichever zone you're running. It's going to be zone one in this case. Well, we got our power hooked up, the brown and the blue. This is the 24 volt coming straight from the transformer right here at these two terminals. You can see I got our power supply wire hooked up right to the transformer, running right to the brown and the blue wire. Now the black wire is our signal. That's going up here to zone one. We're going to use regular irrigation cable from zone one to the black wire. And if you had more than one of these valves hooked up, you'd hook up two, three, four, five, however many you needed to. We just go from number one to the black wire. We no longer use the common terminal. The common terminal is not used in this setup. Well here we have our basic seven strand irrigation wire. We got the red wire hooked into zone one and on this end we got the red wire wired to the black wire. That's our signal wire. That's our on off wire. We got 24 volts continuous and the signal wire. These valves always have power. They always have 24 volts going to them. When zone one kicks on they're already powered to open the valve from the signal. When zone one turns off they already have power to turn off the motor. It'll lose this signal but it'll still have power to close the motor. It has to have the continuous power to open and close whether zone one is on or off. If you're running multiple valves then all of your blue wires and all of your brown wires hit your power supply coming from your transformer. And then of course for zone one you use your red wire, zone two you'd use your blue, zone three would be your black, your blue, whichever wiring sequence you want. That's your individual zones, zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four. So you have your power supply and you have your zone wire. Two different wires here. Well let's fire up a cycle now. We'll get zone one going. We'll zoom in here and see what it's doing. It just clicked on. Zone one is now opening. The motor is opening the valve right now. And now we're open. The motor just shut off. Now we're in the open position. And we're going to advance it to the next station to number two. And now we're going to close. Zone two is opening. Zone one is closing. The motor is closing the ball valve. A nice, smooth, slow operation. Well, that's all it's really doing. When the sprinkler controller says to turn on zone one, it sends the additional 24 volt signal down your irrigation wire to your ball valve with the motor on it, which slowly begins to open and opens the valve. When the time is up, it shuts off the additional 24 volt signal. That tells the motor to start closing the valve and it will shut off the ball valve. The signal on and off is used to open and close the valve, just like a solenoid valve. But instead of a solenoid, it operates the motor that sits on top of the ball valve. Pretty slick setup. Solves a lot of problems with typical solenoid valves, just won't cut it. This little XC is one of the smallest controllers. It has a little bitty 24 volt transformer, but it does seem to run the motor just fine. The Pro C has a bigger transformer, and that's been working for four years in a row without an issue. They've been left outdoors all winter the controller and the motor actuated ball valve, and I've only lost one out of the four years. The ICC has the biggest transformer, so that would run them the best, especially if you're running a bigger size, like inch and a half to two inch. So if you have big valves, you should run the big controller. But the Pro C seems to work just fine, four years in a row without an issue. I only had one crap out, and that was the year no one winterized the system. So I think the ball had some water in it, and the ball froze, jammed up the ball valve, which ruined the motor. It struggled to open and close because the ball valve was seized up. That was the yellow one in that manifold. That's the only one that had been replaced over the four years. And like I say, it hadn't been winterized. So that's pretty impressive performance given the environment they operate in. It's a great alternative to solenoid valves. Give them a try if you can't get solenoid valves to cooperate.